Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Michelle Zapeta, and I am the program coordinator at Waterford Place Cancer Resource Center. Waterford Place provides programs and services free of charge for anyone impacted by a cancer diagnosis that support whole person care. Our speaker for today is Omar Ramos, a certified oncology financial navigator. As a program and administrative support coordinator for Waterford Place, Omar manages participant engagement and provides program and administrative support to all areas of the center. Omar earned his Bachelor of Science in Business Administration from Robert Morris College. He has 25 years of experience working for Rush Copley and most recently as a financial counseling coordinator. Thank you, Omar. Thank you, Michelle. Good afternoon. My name is Omar Ramos, and I am a certified oncology financial navigator with Waterford Place Cancer Resource Center. As Michelle had previously um, alluded to, Waterford Place does support uh, patients and their loved ones who are impacted by a cancer diagnosis uh, free of charge. And part of those services include personal financial resource consultations, which I conduct to help patients address practical issues related to financial and insurance matters. One of those issues that we'll be discussing today is about getting financially organized. I uh, recently read in a study not too long ago here in 2020 that 95% of patients fail to fully pay off their medical balances. Uh, and that is up 53% since 2016. Part of that reason is that medical billing is confusing and it's hard for us to wrap our minds around what we owe, when it's due, and how to get it paid. So what we'll be talking about today will help us address some of those issues and hopefully create a workable plan for us moving forward so that we don't fall behind on our medical bills. Now the purpose that we'll be addressing about why we should organize our bills is multifaceted. First of all, it's easy for ourselves or a caregiver to keep track of the status of all the bills that we have. As you know, it's very common for a cancer patient to receive several different bills for one particular service from different providers. And along with those bills, our explanation of benefits, other insurance documents that could also be confusing. So it's very important that we organize these documents in order to know what our responsibilities are, keep insurance companies and providers accountable to what is being given to us. And lastly, to be able to claim a tax deduction. It's not very often that our medical bills benefit us financially, but in this instance, there is an opportunity for us to take a tax deduction as we file our income tax returns if we qualify. Now, in order to do that, we need to meet a certain percentage of our adjusted gross income in medical bills. That number for 2019 is 10%. Now, I want you to think not just medical bills when we are envisioning this 10% of what we can write off on a tax return. We also wanna include medical expenses that are not covered by insurance. We wanna look at mileage that we incur as we drive to and from our appointments, prescription drugs, and meals during lengthy visits. There's other items that you could possibly also deduct, but I would advise checking with a tax advisor to make sure that all of the expenses that you have incurred are eligible to be included in the medical expenses tax deduction. And hopefully this will make paying those medical bills a little less painful. So the first step when we look at getting financially organized and sort of going through all of our paperwork is to first of all, separate everything um, I've had patients who've come to me with shoe boxes full of medical bills and 
explanation of benefits from the insurance companies, uh, denial paperwork, appeal paperwork, approvals and authorization approvals, and they're just all stuffed together in a box that's been underneath their bed uh, being ignored. Uh, and that's definitely not the place that we want to start when it comes to organizing our items. We would definitely want to separate everything into different piles. We can start by separating all the medical bills and making sure that we look at the provider who is giving this bill to us. Where is it coming from? I uh, want to check what type of service it was, whether it was a lab, an x-ray, an inpatient or an outpatient hospital visit, and the date. We want to make sure that we are getting billed appropriately for services that we actually receive from people that we know. Secondly, we want to look at all the explanation of benefits that have come through from the insurance company. So an explanation of benefits, for those of you who are not familiar, is a document that explains how your insurance is processing the claim submitted to them by the doctor, hospital, surgeon, whoever it may be. That document will explain to you how much the bill is from the doctor, how much your insurance will cover, and ultimately how much you can expect to pay out of your pocket. Now, ideally, the medical bill from your provider and the explanation of benefits from your insurance company should match 100%. And going through this process of separating the bills and the explanation of benefits will help us really determine if, in fact, we are being billed appropriately. We're matching everything up by date, by provider, by service, so that we can make sure that we are paying the right amount and we're not being overcharged or we're not missing a duplicate charge that may need to be revised by a biller or by the insurance company before we pay it. We also want to separate any of our receipts or copies of checks for co-pays or any other healthcare costs that we incurred. These are usually the top three items that we'll normally have on our person is the bill, the explanation of benefits, and then any receipts that we've had for items that we've paid for. Now, separating all these can be done individually where you can just separate all the bills together, and then you can separate all the explanation of benefits together and the receipts, or you can just work your way through them and keep them together by date or by provider or by service. But ultimately what we want to do is match them up. So when we're looking at the matching up process, we want to take that provider bill and look for the service date and the amount of the charge. From that information, we can then match it up to the explanation of benefit and any other supplemental EOBs that we may have. Now, when I speak about supplemental EOBs, that's under the assumption that you have more than one health insurance. Say you have a private health insurance that you personally have through your employer, but then your spouse or significant other has another plan that covers you. You wanna make sure that you're able to separate and match up all the explanation of benefits from each provider and each insurance company. So at times there may be more than one, but ultimately the service date and the amount should match. So we wanna place that provider bill on top. So that doctor bill, hospital bill, radiologist, anesthesiologist, uh, the interventional radiologist, chemo, radiation. We just wanna make sure we have that bill on the top. And then underneath that, we'll put the EOBs, however many there are that are associated with that bill. Any other supplemental forms that we have, any type of denial paperwork or any type of appeal or authorization paperwork, wanna keep it all together. Also wanna attach any receipts from co-pays or down payments that you have made at the doctor's office during the time that you had your service done. Again, keeping everything together, matching them all up, and proceeding with the rest of all the other bills that you have in that same format. Now, one thing that can make this a little bit confusing is that oftentimes you'll receive duplicate bills for the same service. Now, this may happen because a bill 
is being held up in a process with the insurance company for review. And you'll begin receiving bills that say, this is not a bill, but an informational notice to advise you that your bill is pending with an insurance company for review. So you'll get these um, complimentary notices from the doctor or hospital, and it's a bill just indicating that the, that the bill is still pending and we haven't been paid yet and we're still waiting. So you'll, you may get two or three of these before your insurance actually pays the bill. So again, you wanna make sure that these are all the same account and not separate accounts. So that's what I mean by taking the duplicates in this stack and separating them away from the original bill. So as long as you have one of those, and it may be the most recent, any other duplicate statements that match account number and total charges should be kept aside in a different stack so we can dispose of them later. Again, we don't want to confuse ourselves thinking that these are four bills when in actuality it's just one bill. And at different stages, that bill was mailed out. So again, provider bill, ELB, receipts, proceed with all that format and make sure all the duplicates of the same statements are removed from your pile just to avoid any confusion. Once we've gone through that entire stack of bills and paperwork and explanation of benefits, we wanna create a system to file everything for future uh, use. We wanna make sure that we can have it easily accessible to us or to anybody who may need it. Uh, this is very important when we may need to designate a power of attorney for healthcare or finance during the course of our treatment. And we wanna be able to have a way for our representative to have access to our information when it comes to our medical bills so that they may follow up however is necessary in each instance, whether it's appealing a denied claim, following up on a duplicate charge that needs to be resubmitted to the insurance company by the provider, or simply making sure that bills are getting paid. Now, this system does not have to be uh, very elaborate or cost a lot of money. It just has to be something that really works for you. You can use a large accordion folder, a file cabinet, a large binder, or simply a manila folder that has a, a date and a, a label on it regarding what's inside that folder. Um, these are some examples of labels that we wanna put in our file system so that we can easily organize our information and be able to access it without too much to do. Uh, we wanna look at the procedure or the date of the service. So if you have more than um, one procedure, say you had an ultrasound or you had a lumpectomy or a biopsy, you can label these different file folders by the actual procedure that you had. And then any of the bills that were related to that procedure could be listed in this separate file. Or you may choose to just go with the date, whether it is monthly, bi-monthly, bi-weekly, you can just list them by date. Well, ultimately, you wanna have in each of these file folders a label or a file specifically for each provider of the service. Your hospital, where you had your service done, the surgeon who was involved in your care, the anesthesiologist, the radiologist, pathologist, your radiation oncologist, and your medical oncologist. These are all gonna be separate files within your system that can easily give you access to everything that's related to that specific doctor and the bill. You also wanna keep a separate file for your prescription information. Since a lot of the prescriptions are going to be separate from your medical bills and doctors, you wanna keep a separate file specifically for the type of prescriptions you have and keep those bills and those explanations of benefits and the receipts all together. And then you may wanna have also a miscellaneous file for items that you may not yet know where to place until you can have a really thoughtful plan on where those items should go. So once we have everything put away, we've got it in a file, then we can review 
these bills to determine what our next steps are going to be. So we want to read each bill or statement very carefully. Review the information and look for the following items. You want to make sure that you know the name of the provider. Who is the doctor that completed the service or the hospital? Who was it? And you want to make sure that, yes, I remember seeing that person. You want to see that the address of the provider matches what you've known and what you have on file. You want to look out for the account number, again, to make sure that you are not receiving duplicate statements or duplicate bills for a same service. You want to look at the date of service and the total charges for that service. And in that, it should also give a description of the service you had. It will show your name and any insurance information, including Medicare. You also want to determine if the statement that you received has a status of being paid or it is still pending. Now that's very important for us because oftentimes we'll receive a bill for the total charges of our visit, which can be very, very high depending on the type of service we've had. And I'll give an example from one of my interactions with a cancer patient in the past who received a statement for $80,000 from the hospital where they did their chemo. Obviously, when they opened that bill, it gave them quite a scare because they were not aware that the status of that was pending insurance. They thought they were getting a bill to pay the $80,000. So again, very important to look at the status of the bill so that we're not becoming um, overwhelmed with information that isn't necessarily our responsibility at the moment. We also want to look at the phone number to call for any questions. All of these statements will have several ways for you to connect with and contact your provider. There'll be a website, there will be a fax number, there'll be an email address, phone number, so that you can connect and ask any questions that you have about your bill. And that's significant. We want to make sure that you understand the bill that you have. That first of all, you can confirm that yes, it was you. Yes, that was a service that you had. And yes, your bill does appear to be accurate. It's very important to look at the charges on the bill and make sure again that there wasn't any duplicate charges that were missed, because that may need to be clarified on the statement. And you may have to ask some additional questions to the billing department that sent that bill to you to make sure again that everything really matches your experience and what you know to have uh, received as a service. It's all about keeping track of all of these items. Um, it seems to be something that's overwhelming at first when we think about keeping track of all of our bills and keeping track of all of our uh, expenses um, and even thinking about our personal finances as well. Um, it could be overwhelming to just take it all in and think I have so much to do and I have so many bills to pay uh, the whole reason that we are doing this, again, is to reduce that anxiety, take away some of that pressure so that we can focus on what our responsibilities are and have a plan in place that's easily actionable so that we can reduce our stress, pay our bills, and stay in line with our responsibilities. So we want to keep track of all of the payments. Make a record of the information on a sheet of paper for easy review, and you can make a list of the following things. Again, provider of service, account number, date of service, the total charge, the amount that was paid by Medicare, the amount paid by any other insurance, any payments you have made, and a current balance. Now you can do this, again, the very old fashioned pen and paper route, uh, and keep it just a paper trail, or you can do this on an electronic spreadsheet and track it so that you're making sure of what your total responsibilities are between all of these statements. Uh, so for example, uh, I did an, organiza an organization project with a patient when we brought in all of her shoe boxes. We opened them all up, we separated all the bills, we separated all the EOBs, we took out any denial paperwork, we took out any appeal paperwork, authorizations, uh, well, we got down to just the very nitty gritty of what we had to deal with. Current bills, current EOBs, 
we matched them all up and then we wrote them all down. So we got a big picture of what the total amount due was. Uh, we did that using an Excel spreadsheet, but it's just as easily um, attainable by doing it on pencil and paper. Uh, it's just about organizing who, what, when, where, how much, and what's left for us to do. Uh, so when this person came in, she ended up coming in with probably over $20,000 worth of bills on paper. Once we went through everything and determined what was her real, actual responsibility for things being paid, it was more in line with about $5,000 worth of bills. So going from $20,000 to $5,000 made a significant impact in this individual's overall expectation for herself, for her medical bills, and it took away this burden of feeling as though she was in a, in a hole that she was unable to get out of. So it's very important for us to keep track of these items uh, so that we can really know exactly what we're paying, when we have to pay it, and it allows us to really build into our budget a way that helps us look at each option and what our next steps would be. All of this is really truly about reducing our anxiety, reducing our stress, giving us options, and helping us connect with resources that'll help us address these outstanding bills that we have. We wanna make sure that everything gets paid because that's one thing that I often hear in my times with patients uh, during financial counseling is that, you know, I've, I've never had a problem before. I've always had insurance coverage and it's always been fine. And then all of a sudden I have cancer and I have multiple doctor's appointments every week. And I get to the end of the month and I'm looking at 10, 15, 20 different bills. And I just don't know what to do, where to get started. And I feel overwhelmed and my, my job is, is suffering and I don't know what my resources are. This is really why we're talking about this today. Again, keeping track of everything. We wanna make sure that things get paid in full because we don't want to have things fall into collections if we can uh, avoid that at all possible. Nobody likes being in collections. It becomes just a overall uh, terrible experience for a lot of people, especially when you're dealing with a chronic disease. Now, when we actually pay these bills that we've gone through, we wanna mark the bill as being paid by the insurance company and by us. So when we actually take that bill that we owe $50 on and we send that check in the mail for the $50 to Dr. Uh, XYZ and the doctor gets that bill and, and, and the check and it's credited to your account, we wanna make sure that you document that it's paid in your records. So you take your bill, your EOB, in your receipt copy of that check and you can mark paid in full and take it off your spreadsheet. And it begins to give you confidence and that you're getting these taken care of. And as you start to begin to see each one get paid, you're able to file it away in a paid folder so that again, you're seeing the transition from things that were unorganized to organized to being paid and put away. Add that receipt to the payment folder or the divider. If you're deducting the medical expenses on the tax return, you wanna hang on to these. Uh, again, it's good to hang on to them until the end of the year so you can determine if you meet that threshold of 10%. Uh, and oftentimes, especially for those uh, dealing with a chronic illness, uh, it's a very good chance that you could reach that 10% threshold and qualify for a tax write-off on your return. So we definitely wanna keep those at least until the end of the year. So some reminders and some helpful tips that we wanna talk about as we're getting close to the end of our session is we wanna look at whether or not insurance is paid on the claim. So if the insurance is paid on the claim, then the supplemental insurance can be billed. And now this will be for those of you who have more than one insurance. You have a primary and a secondary plan, or if you have Medicare and a supplemental plan, then you wanna make sure that the supplemental insurance is gonna be billed secondarily. 
If the provider of service is handling that for you, then simply file the insurance payment form in the correct provider folder or the divider. So again, you receive a bill and it still says it's pending insurance because it's been billed to your secondary plan. Now, some of us may have supplemental plans where we have to actually file that claim with the EOB from the primary insurance to our supplemental. So once we receive the bill, the EOB, and we can keep those together, make a copy of them, and then we can submit that to our second insurance. Again, only if the primary insurance plan or the doctor's office is not sending it to your secondary. Most hospitals and doctors will automatically do that for you. But again, there are some plans that are a little bit different, depending on the plan, that may require you to do that physical legwork yourself. So again, just making sure that you keep those in order and that you file them appropriately and just keep track of them as they're going through the life cycle. So if you do, again, need to send it yourself, always make sure you keep a photocopy of the ELB form and the provider bill. Those are important because the EOBs usually only get one in the mail. That's a paper form. If you need to get another one, you most likely will have to call the insurance company and they will either send you a copy or ask you to log on to their website to look at in an electronic version of that copy or they'll email it to you. Uh, so there's still options if for some reason you have misplaced your explanation of benefits or you didn't make a photocopy of it before you sent it in to your secondary plan. Um, always not worry, nothing to worry about. You can still contact your insurance company and they'll make a way for you to get a copy. So I do want to show you a couple samples of what an explanation of benefit looks like and a medical bill looks like so that we can, again, pick those items out and understand exactly what we're looking at when we review the bills. Now, this is a sample of a medical bill. Um, it shows a statement of the physician services and it gives a date right at the top. So again, this is where you want to confirm whether or not you have received these services or not, and that it's not a mistake or an error in the charges. We look at the account number there on the left side, we can see our patient name, and then it gives us a description of the invoice number, the charges, who the doctor was, and some payment activity, and it gives us an invoice balance. So this first example, we see that the doctor was Dr. Stacy Mills from Pathology, and she gives her level four charge, which was a surgical path exam fee on September 11th of 2009. So that's where we want to begin. We want to make sure that, yes, I saw this doctor and that is the service that was provided to me. Now we can go over to the right side of that bill and we'll see the payment activity. What's happened with this $1,246? What's the status of it? So they will break this down by date. So we see September 11th, we incurred the total charges. And on September 15th, the insurance claim was filed. So the doctor's office sent that $1,246 bill to your insurance company. And then on the 24th of September, doctor's office received a payment from your insurance company. In this instance, we have it listed as United Healthcare, and they made a payment of $400.97. Now this adjustment that's reflected on here is a discount that your insurance company receives from the doctor's office because they've contracted for an agreed amount on this type of charge. So that negative 774 there is not a payment that you made or a discount that you asked for. It's simply an adjustment that the doctor's office is making with United Healthcare to agree that although we're charging $1,246, we're gonna take what you're offering, what you're paying us of $497 and that adjustment will be considered a contractual adjustment between United Healthcare and the doctor's office. Now this invoice balance that's moved to your responsibility 
on the same day shows of $70.76. So this will be the bill that you are responsible for paying for Dr. Stacy Mills. So although again, total charges were $1,246, you're really only paying the $70.76. Now, if we had the actual explanation of benefits for this specific service, we could go back between the two and confirm all of these data points. Confirm the doctor, confirm the date of service, confirm the procedure. We can even confirm the payment activity and truly understand what that $70 comprised. Was it a copay? Was it part of your deductible or maybe even your coinsurance, your out of pocket expense, that 90 10 or that 80 20 split? Those are those. That will, the EOB will tell us what that $70 actually represents. So this again, just a sample of a medical bill. Um, all these really uh, will be different based on your provider of service. There isn't any type of standardization in the industry for all medical billing. It's simply going to be, uh, again, different for each provider. Now, this here is a sample of an explanation of benefits. And what's really comforting at the very top here is that it says this is not a bill. So that really helps us truly understand, again, what this document is and what it is intended to communicate. A lot of times we'll receive an explanation of benefits like this and think that it's a bill because it looks very much like a bill. Um, and again, very important for us to read through these uh, and take our time and carefully read through so that we see right at the top, this is not a bill. And as you'll look through this statement, you'll be able to see a statement summary, which shows the date that the service was uh, done, how much the total charge was, how much your insurance company paid to your provider, and whether or not you had a copay or any type of deductible. So this does immediately give you an idea of how the bill was processed. And then it goes into more detail down at the bottom and it breaks up the claim and it shows you the specific charge, the discounts that the insurance company received, how much they paid, and again, how much was your copay. And in this case, the copay out of the almost $500 bill was only $25. A very simplistic example, uh, and again, really just intended to get an idea of what these look like so that we can uh, be better acquainted with them and know how to match them up to our medical bills. So again, looking back over the information that we talked about today, we want to make sure that we are simplifying and organizing all the paper trail that we have. Now we can do this all by, again, pen, pencil, paper, file cabinets, in files, whatever works for you, or if you feel even comfortable with technology, you can transition all of this information into a digital spreadsheet and keep it on your computer. You can scan copies of your medical bills, your EOBs, and keep them in digital file folders on your computer. So again, there's very, uh, very many great ways to store this information, track it, and make sure that ultimately the bills are getting paid appropriately. Uh, so we wanna make sure that this is being done consistently. So again, that we can have access to the information easily and that if we do need to have assistance with this process, whether it's a family member, a friend, a close confidant, they would be able to grab your folder, easily open it up, take a look at what's due, understand what you have and know how to help you negotiate going forward. So that concludes our time together talking about getting financially organized. We do have other topics um, that we will be conducting here in the near future regarding insurance and financial issues. Um, but as a reminder, I want you to know that I'm available here at Waterford Place to talk with you on a personal level to review information on your medical bills, insurance options, family medical leave information, uh, pretty much a whole host of topics that are related to your cancer diagnosis and the practical effects that it has upon your finances. 
So thank you for joining us this afternoon, and I will conduct uh, another uh, series, hopefully here very shortly. Thank you.